for a second. I wanted to give me that. You <laughs> the Leafs won a thing. Here is my thoughts collected view on this, if you can believe it or not. If you want to see the live reaction, that link is down below. I thought it kept pretty composed. It was pretty. I ran around the CBC building. I ran. I ran like like a lot. People were like, "Steve, we're working here," and I'm like, "Yeah, but screaming." Okay, so I found out a little beforehand how this was all gonna shake out on TV, and it happened exactly the way I wanted it to. Not just the the number one pick part, but exactly the way it played out. They go through the list: number 14 pick, Boston; number 13 pick, Carolina, and then if they get a winner, they skip, and you go, oh, "The team that was supposed to be there clearly won a lottery," and they tell you all the way down to number four, and you know who the three winners are. But you don't know where they landed until after commercial break. Now let's not skip ahead too far. There were some highlights. Like 30 seconds in, they're like, and the 14th pick goes to the Boston Bruins. Don Sweeney sitting there like, cool, glad I flew here for this. Then we didn't really get another highlight until it was obvious that the Jets won. Because that meant the Flames card came up and Brian Burke gave a Dragon Ball Z worthy death stare. Before the draft lottery, Burke was talking about how he'd be super upset if the Oilers won again. Hockey gods are like, gotcha, fam. That's not fair, but it made for an amazing moment. And then the Vancouver Canucks card came up, meaning that the Columbus Blue Jackets won. And Trevor Linden looked like so genuinely sad that I I, I couldn't even laugh. And then the Edmonton Oilers card came up and ah! Again. Now here's what I'm telling myself, okay? We're coming back from commercial break. It's gonna be the top three picks. It's gonna be the Leafs, the Blue Jackets, and the Jets. Not necessarily in that order. We're gonna find out. And here's me going, all right, Jesse Pugliarvi, whatever, is gonna be pretty good when he plays for the Leafs and I learn how to pronounce his name. Already surrendering to the fact that the Leafs are definitely gonna pick third. It comes up and guess what? The Columbus Blue Jackets get him. <gasps> I'm like, Patrick Laine! Oh my goodness! Because all this time, I've just been going, I know they're not going to get Matthews, just Laine. You know, he just seems like a really good player, a talented goal scorer, a winner. He would join other talented Europeans on the team, and, you know, he just kind of seems like a chill dude. Uh, Patrick, what would you say your number one skill is? You ever look at clouds and pretend there's something else and just realize how incredible clouds themselves actually are? But they skip right ahead to the number one pick, all Miss Universe whatever style. And here it comes. He flips over the card and... Oh my <laughs> now, if you want to see me yelling and screaming and freaking out a little more, again, live reaction video down below. Here is what I actually think. All right, so Austin Matthews is the consensus. First overall pick, the Leafs are going to get him. Star-studded center. He's dominated in a men's league already. In Switzerland, he took a chance. He said, no, I'm not going to play in the WHL. I'm going to go all the way to Switzerland. I'm going to make some bank. I'm going to dominate over there. And I'm going to be the number one pick. So, let's say he lives up to the hype. Let's say he's as good as everyone is saying he is. Let's say he's a center on the Leafs. Let's say he becomes the Leafs' number one center. This, all of a sudden, becomes very interesting. Because they just locked Nazem Kadri up to six years at $4.5 That's actually pretty cap friendly. And for the most part, they've been training William Nylander at center. It looks like they want this guy to be a center. He's been center on the Marlies, he was center on the Leafs, and now again in the playoffs, he's a center. So you could have a trio of Matthews, Nylander, and Kadri. Oh my goodness, that's amazing if they could afford it. And this all of a sudden becomes the tricky part. Let's say both Matthews and Nylander live up to the hype. They're the team's number one and two centers. It doesn't matter which one's one or two. And then Kadri gets relocated to to three. Well, consider this. The Leafs locked up Kadri to six years, but two years from now, a limited no-trade clause kicks in. Meaning in two years, you could trade Kadri, but he has a list of ten teams you can trade him to. Until then, uh, there's nothing. You can trade him wherever you want. Does this trade how the Leafs feel about Kadri, I wonder? So that's just something to consider. It's a possibility, but I have a hard time believing the Leafs would invest what they invested in Kadri this past season, give him a six-year deal, all the while, they had the best odds out of anyone at getting Matthews. And they're like, oh, now we got him. Jeez, what do we do with Nas? I just suggested it because it is possible to have too much of a good thing. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Can you imagine Matthews, Nylander, Kadri? Oh, my God. Uh, here's another one. Um, mm -mm. Should we discuss whether or not the Leafs might want Patrick Laine number one? And how, if that is the case... Brendan Shanahan and crew are kind of screwed. Look at it this way. In 2012, there was the whole fail for nail campaign. He was the majority number one pick. Most people thought Nail Yakupov, Nail Yakupov was going to go first overall. Oilers management almost unanimously was like, nope, we want Ryan Murray first. That's who we want to take. That decision was vetoed high up 
in the Oilers organization and they picked Yakupov anyway. Because Oilers fans, an extremely disenchanted fan base, is this sounding familiar, wanted Nail Yakupov. At very least, they wanted the guy who everyone thought was going to be first, which was Yakupov. Fail for Nail, remember that? How do you get up there with the number one pick when all your fans are already mad at you and go, the Edmonton Oilers proudly select not the guy you thought we were going to pick? And some people have even asked, well, do you think the Leafs would consider trading down? They haven't had a first overall pick since 1985. I wasn't even alive. Are you nuts? This pick basically guaranteed that the 2016 NHL draft, which is in Buffalo, is going to be almost entirely Canadian. I was at the World Juniors a few years ago when it was in Buffalo. We're not going to talk about the result, but we are going to talk about how it was just a sea of red. It was all Canada fans. Droves of fans from Southern Ontario were already going to head to Buffalo to take part in the draft festivities. Imagine how many blue and white fans are going to go to see the Leafs pick Matthews first. Oops, I just kind of said Matthews instinctively. Something else for you to consider. Leafs get the first pick. Woo! Awesome. Great. Okay. Yeah. What about the Pittsburgh pick? That is going to be, I don't know where that's going to end up. Might even be 30th if they win the Stanley Cup, which sucks. Oh man, then the Leafs won't have a pick until their second rounder, which is 31st. Oh my God, I forgot. No word of a lie. I forgot until like two days ago that the Leafs second round pick is the 31st pick that they have like three first rounders, guys. By the way, just as I said that, I'm like, I'm going to look up a bunch of past 31st overall picks and tell everyone who they are because it's going to be an amazing list. And then you realize the Oilers have picked 31st a lot and woof. In 2008, the Panthers had Jakob Markstrom. That was all right. 2009, Islanders Miko Koskinen. 2010, Oilers Tyler Pitlick. 2011, Oilers David Musil. 2012, Oscars So You Think You Can Dance. But all right, let's go look at a few of the players who were available just a few picks later. In 2008, Roman Yossi was available. In 2009, Kyle Clifford has played over 400 games. Ryan O'Reilly was also available that year. In 2010, Justin Falk was available. In 2011, Brandon Saad was available! Ah! With the Leafs pick! Ah! Brandon Saad was with the Leafs pick? Don't even bother looking it up, dude. It's, it's, it's... Roman Yossi too. He's kidding about Saad and Yossi, right? He is not. He is, uh, very not. But hey, that was the past! This is the future in the future! Like two months from now, the Leafs get the first overall pick. So, what does this mean for the Leafs' future in the grand scale of things? Largely nothing. Maybe not largely nothing. How about not much? Look, the Oilers have picked first a bunch of times. And you can get a fantastic player with the first overall pick, but it's what you do with the other picks. And the Leafs don't have 12 draft picks for nothing. That being said, they revealed the card and it said one. Oh! By the way, pick of me and Bay. Oh my God, we're such a cute couple. A lot of people were tweeting me, oh my God, can you imagine if this was a Steve Harvey moment? Ha <laughs> ha. No, I can't imagine that. Let's imagine Bill Daly actually did make a mistake and the Jets were supposed to get the first overall pick. He had the common sense that, oh, I'm in Toronto. So even if the Leafs didn't win, oops, I guess they won now. But ah, uh, come on, we're, we're friendly, we're friendly, right? We're friendly, we're so friendly. Leaf fans, oh, breathe it in. They won, they won a thing. Ah. That's it for this one. Thank you so, 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 so much for watching. Click like if you like this video, click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends. Definitely, definitely, definitely check out my live reaction video. That's already got over 10,000 views. It's been up for less than 24 hours. I went absolutely out of my mind. Like and subscribe, that one as well. That's on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. And I will see you next time when, uh, I don't know, I blacked out.